The rise to power of the great Mishtek lord Eitgir is described in the codices Zushnato and Columbino Becker. Both of these manuscripts relate the ritual sacrifices of Eitgir's two nephews, Pendog and Sixhouse, apparently for political reasons. The pictorial narrative of the Columbino Becker is clearest by showing the sacrificial scenes immediately before the depiction of eight deer receiving rulership emblems at the climax of his political career. Page nine of the Becker begins with eight deer's war against the family of Ten Dog and Six House. We see eight deer posed in a hostile gesture and wearing military costume. He attacks the place red and white bundle. The conquest of this place is indicated by an arrow stuck into the place sign. Five members of a ruling family are captured at red and white bundle by eight deer. First, Eleven Wind and his second wife, Six Monkey. They are holding small flags in their hands, indicating that they are captives. Next, their son, Four Wind, is shown. He was either spared by Eight Deer, or he escaped. We do know that he was involved in Eight Deer's assassination several years later. Finally, Eight Deer's two half-nephews appear. These persons are Ten Dog and Six House. They are sons of Eleven Wind's first marriage. Their family was probably related to the old lineage at Tilantango. Thus, in a sense, they represent loose ends which Eight Deer felt a threat to his position as ruler and founder of a new lineage there. Eleven Wind and Six Monkey are shown stripped of lordly costume. They are dispatched in the common manner by having their chests cut open and their hearts removed. Interestingly, the sacrificer is not depicted or identified. Ten Dog and Six House, however, participate in two unusual and elaborate rituals. Six House is shown tied to a rack before a building displaying a sacred bundle. The bundle is associated with rulership and here appears to be actually witnessing the events. Six House is shot with arrows. The important aspect of the ritual is the shedding of the Lord's blood onto a kind of wheel-shaped element. Dog participates in a gladiatorial combat. He is tied to a stone and given small batons to defend himself. His protagonist is dressed in a tight-fitting jaguar costume. The jaguar warrior wears a claw on his right hand in order to scratch and tear at the victim, again to ritually shed his blood before he is killed. becomes tired and lowers his guard. The jaguar warrior then moves in to finish him.
Later he is taken away to have his heart cut out as an offering. We have seen that at the climax of eight years' rise to power is the removal of a ruling family by elaborate and sacred blood sacrifice. These sacrifices were politically motivated. In other words, they were ritual assassinations. Power, closely tied to lineage and ancestry, was fundamental to the classic Maya ruler concept. One wonders if the sacrifice of great lords as a method of political removal was not important in their rituals as well. The Aztec, on the other hand, maintained a large tribute empire of many foreign groups. The Mexica Tlatawani had become an elected position among siblings, and the rulers of these subservient areas were valuable as the regional focus of centralized authority. If a conflict developed, the Triple Alliance punished the population as a whole. The ruler was seldom sacrificed. 